We are in the little cave, as they say. My little fishing corner, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Got the old kayak sitting right here. Um, today we are, well, I say today, like it's some giant project, but I'm going to take off the braid on this reel, oh shoot, on this reel, it's running a little low for my liking and it's lost a ton of color, um, I'm going to replace that with, oh man, I'm replacing that with this stuff. So, I um, last time I refilled this reel, I put on, it's called Suffix 832 Braid. And, you know, I, I stayed away from it for the longest time. I heard kind of mixed reviews about it. And the whole idea is that it's supposed to be smoother. There are eight strands. Let's see if I can find a spool here real quick. There we go. So the idea is there's eight strands. So it makes it a rounder line. Um, whereas the traditional Power Pro, I mean, every brand makes it, but the four strand is more like a saw. It's got more edges on it, so it cuts through grass a little better. But because it's not as smooth, it doesn't come through the guides as smooth doesn't cast as smooth, etc., etc. Um, so I tried this stuff out, and it's actually been great, but recently I've had some failures with my connection knots, and I'm thinking it's because the line, I think the, I think the four strand, because it's a little more sharp and aggressive, I think it's gonna grab into the leader line better and hold. Um, that's the hope at least. So, and I've been using this stuff forever and have had zero problems with it. So I'm kind of like, all right, that was my fault for, you know, straying away. You know, if it's not broken, do not fix it, as they say. But anyway, so I'm going to strip off this line here and we'll put on the new stuff i'll show you guys what leader line i'm using and why that is and we'll kind of just get rigged up for tomorrow so stay tuned all right so i've got the line off of it if you guys can see right there so that at the bottom that is electrical tape so i actually put that down there to give the braid something to dig into, something to kind of grab on, so that if I am that low on line, and we get down to the nitty gritty there, the knot won't just slide around. Uh, you still want it to hold onto the spool. I might actually add another strip of electrical tape just so I can have a fresh piece for it to grab onto, um, and then I'll tie up my new line. But Pretty simple trick. I used to, for the longest time, I would, I would actually, let me show you guys again, actually. I would go in, if you guys can see those little holes in there, I would actually string my line through the holes and try and tie this knot. That way it would hold on there. But oh my goodness, it was a nightmare. Every time you'd have to pull the spool out through the side, you could never really get it through. Um, this is just so much better. So I'm gonna get some electrical tape, put that on there, and then we'll spool up the new line. <clears throat> All right, so we are rigged up. I've got everything going here. I got a fresh spool. Ooh, nothing better than a fresh spool braid. And man, I do miss. I miss this, the Power Pro. It's, it's just got a nice color to it. It's nostalgic for me. All right. Now we're gonna talk about my leader line material because, you know, I'm still undecided. I mean, I'm just hopping around stuff. So 
I don't really know yet, to be honest with you. But here, here's my dilemma. Okay, here's my dilemma. So I've used just normal monofilament, kind of like whatever brand I could grab for a while, and it had no problems except for at one point I had some, I think it was, yeah, this guy right here, Stren, but it was 12 pound, and it broke on me like three times in a day. So, okay. Even if, maybe it's just that wasn't heavy enough line, maybe I just needed 15, um, but uh, when that happens, it's hard to maintain confidence in that product. So I hopped around and I settled on something that I thought was going to be my go-to for a while, which somewhere in, which is this stuff, P-Line CXX. Okay, P-Line CXX. This line is so rigid. It is so rigid, and it it does not stretch a whole lot, and it's also not very thin. It's kind of just like a beefy line, extra strong, beefy line, all right? So I was thinking, you know what? Screw this. Let me just get the strongest line that is available to me, and I'll just use that. That'll be my line, okay? And it had no problems for a while, but then, similar situation. I'm out fishing at a pond two or three times. My, but now, instead of breaking, because it's not breaking, now... I have my leader line knot. So the knot between my braid and my leader line, I had one fish just set the hook on him, came un unraveled. And I was like, what? And you know it's you know the knot failed when you come back and it's curly at the end. Because that means that that pulled out of the knot. Okay, so something was not grabbing hard enough. Something was not gripping in the knot. It slipped out. Um, and I was like, oh wow, freak accident. Happened two more times that day, not even on hook sets. I had one where I brought it in and I just had the bait just dangling, you know, ready to cast it again. It just fell off. It just, the whole leader line just fell off. I, I actually grabbed it and retied it on. Like that's landed right on the shore. Um, so that got me kind of thinking and the same kind of thing. Now I'm thinking this might be too rigid. I don't know if there's enough squish in it because it doesn't really stretch that much it doesn't really bend that much i'm thinking okay i need something squishier bendier something that's more forgiving so i was just at walmart i got the tried and true classic berkeley big game 15 pound and we're going to give this a shot for a while it's just traditional monofilament it's supposed to be pretty abrasion resistant and you know it's cheap and i'm broke so, we're giving it a shot. I'm not saying, I'm not saying this is the greatest leader line of all time. I have no idea. We're going to try it out, though. Um, I have more confidence in this product, just because I know it's tried and true. You can, if you can get it at Walmart, um, usually that means that people have been using it for a while. So, and it sells. So, I trust it. Um... I'm going to tie it up now. I'm going to go fishing again tomorrow, and we'll kind of see how it stands. You know, hopefully I can get some big hook sets on it to see if it can withstand that kind of power. Because I don't want to have to baby my rod uh, when I get a bite. I, I like to go full throttle. So I'm trying to find a line that can, that can support that kind of, like a snap, you know, without having the line break or the, or the knot come unraveled. But anyway... I'm going to tie up this real quick. We're going to give the old KVD spinner bait a shot. Um, again, I'll probably retie about 13 times <laughs> while I'm on the water tomorrow. But, all right, we are wrapping things up here. I am getting my spinning rod all rigged up. So I didn't actually replace the braid on it. I'm going to keep my suffix 832 on there. Um, I honestly couldn't find 15 pound at Walmart. So next time I go to Bass Pro or if I make an order, I'm going to get 15 pound power pro and put it on there, but for now, I'm going to keep on the, I believe it's 20 pound 832 braid on there, and what I did get though is I got some Stren 8 pound monofilament, just the OG stuff for leader line because all I had was that CXX stuff and I had it in 10 pound, which is a little beefy for spinning tackle. So I got a little leader tied up, 
same rule, everything flies, same knot and everything. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna start with, I've just been, I've been in a jerkbait kind of mood. That's honestly one of my favorite things to throw of all time. So, this is a bait that I have not fished a lot, and that's for a couple reasons. Um, I don't wanna, I'm not an expert on this bait, so I'm probably doing something wrong, but I think I overwork it a little bit. Um, this one tends to, there's two balancer balls inside there, if you could see that, go back and forth. So the idea is, it's in the back of the bait when you make a cast to give it uh, maximum distance. So with my helicopter, it kind of shoots straight like that. But then when you reel it down, then those two balls fall in the front, sit in that little pocket there, and then you're working it just like that. And it stays like this. But what I've noticed happens, it happens with a lot of lures, but especially with this one, it seems like if I give it just too hard of a pull, it'll tip back those weights will actually get knocked back again and then now it's sitting like this in the water and then my next pull it just looks so unnatural and I'm not a fan of it but I'm gonna give it some more time tomorrow I love the paint scheme on it oh by the way this is a duo realis it's their 110 size so I'm actually I love their 100 size that lure broke off on me on a nice fish I like that one because it does not have a weight transfer system. So it's extremely consistent when you work it. I can be more aggressive and erratic with it. This one I gotta be more gentle with, give it light taps. But we're gonna give it a shot tomorrow, hopefully I can get a nice bite on it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna tie her up and that's gonna be it for today guys. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope this was somewhat interesting. Hopefully you learned something. Um, or maybe you didn't learn anything, that's fine, because I am not a pro by any means. So, I'm just, you know, I'm learning as I go to. So, I don't fish all the time. I go through long bouts where I don't fish. So, I'm sure I'm behind the eight ball on a lot of things. I'm cool with that. I like learning new stuff. So, if you have anything like to share with me, please drop it in the comments. I'd love to learn. But, until tomorrow, we'll see if this plan works out. I'm going to head out in my kayak and... We'll try to explore some new areas. So thank you guys. Um, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. But have a good rest of your day. See you guys.